Good morning, I'm Wanda with Jimmy Branch Homestead. Today, I'm going to be rabbit proofing my fence. So to do that, I'm going to add, first of all, I have to rake away all of the leaves that are up along the fence. And then I will be putting two foot chicken wire around the bottom of the fence. Now remember in my intro I mentioned that last year we put up this brand new fence and before that we had a smaller garden that was fenced and when we had the chicken wire we had no problem with rabbits. But I didn't get around to putting chicken wire up last year around the new fence and I had to replant the beans three times and still didn't get any. <clears throat> and peas twice. So I don't want to go through that this year. It's time to plant the peas in my garden. So before I can do that, I want to get this fence rabbit proofed. So I thought I'd bring you along today. It will probably take me more than today to do the whole fence because each of the sides are a hundred and something feet. And the ends I think are 40 something feet. So um, yeah, quite a bit of fencing to do, but um, Let's get started. Okay, let's get this raked away from the fence. Now that we have that done, I'm going to start rolling out the wire. Okay, so I'm going to be attaching the wire, chicken wire, to the other fencing today with J clips. And they're called that because they're in the shape of a J. You put it around the wire and then use this tool to crimp it together and it forms a circle around the two wires to hold it in place. So I'll need to make sure that the chicken wire is as low to the ground as possible, maybe even bent a little bit because our ground is very uneven here, to make sure that the bunnies can't get in underneath. So I'm going to wrap the corner here around a, the, the corner here about six inches so that when I go back and do the sides, I can overlap that and again, Make sure there's no gaps for the bunnies to get out in. <laughs> okay, so let's get started on this. And it might be a little cumbersome. I might have to take my gloves off. Yep. At least my left, let's see. And I just put the little J clip in the tool with the curve being up where these two pieces are on the tool and the flat end where this one piece is here. So I'll show you on one. When you squeeze it, see it just kind of makes it into a circle. And that's what will hold the fence in place. And these are made out of an aluminum so they don't rust either which I love that. The fence will rust. <laughs> the chicken wire, eventually, like the very bottom, um, is rusted because we had it for almost five years around our original um, garden. So, but we reuse stuff here on the homestead. Wire is very expensive. Fencing is very expensive. So whenever we can reuse something, we do. And sometimes it'll sit like this sat. Um, all last summer out by our garage waiting for us to use it. <clears throat> the other thing is here where you see 
all these cut off ends, these will get wrapped around the fencing. So I need to make sure that I have room to do that when I start here. And I'm pushing down with my foot to make sure it's I'm actually bending it a little bit with the ground to make absolutely sure those starn bunnies are not going to get under my fencing. So then I try to line up here where the little cross wires are at the fencing where I want to put it. I just did this for the first time last year and I'm still not super good at it. It does take practice. But I'll be getting lots of practice here on the homestead. By the time I'm done doing this big fence, I'll probably be a pro. <laughs> can reach it a little better maybe okay that time it got so I'm not sure if you can see that from there but I'll give you some close-ups as we kind of go <clears throat> let me go ahead and get these done all the way down okay so I've completed the corner and I just kind of wrapped it around the other wire on the very corner I did fasten it with the J clips and then you can see how uneven our ground is by I only have you know two maybe rows of the chicken wire over here on the corner but three four feet down I have like three or four rows <laughs> So I'll come back when I'm completed with the whole fence and bend this under and then all along that, the bottom I'm going to use fabric staples to put in and keep it secure so they can't wiggle underneath. That helps to really keep it down there far. So I am going to go ahead, I've also got the top, and the easiest way I find is to J-clip it to um, the rib and the wire and that way it, I can go down in the middle see and do it again I don't put as many in the middle just one every two three feet to keep it even unless I'm on real even ground then I might put a, a couple more in but um, you definitely want to put them probably every foot along the bottom and then I usually go about nine rectangles in the fence or so along the top but like I said just sporadic in the middle just to kind of help keep the fence tight so I have my roll here and a long way to go so rather than show you all this repetition I'm going to go ahead and just kind of roll it out and then I'll come back with you hi tippy dog this is our big dog tippy so I have the roll rolled out on the ground and I'll go back and finish pinning it up but I thought it would be easier to just roll out the whole end and get it done. But I wanted to kind of show you the fence, this wonderful fence that my husband built for me last year. See he does do a lot of work around the homestead. <laughs> he just hasn't been on camera yet. We didn't film last year so unfortunately none of this was on film. But where the original garden ended is where those 4 by 4s and that framing is up there. And then all of this end we added. And my first chicken coop, the hoop coop back there. Let me see if you can see it over here. There you go. Um, was built inside the fence. Actually, I built that and then he built the fence around it like this which is what I wanted him to do. <clears throat> we have another project that will be going up this spring here in front of the hoop coop. So um, check back in for that. But I just wanted to kind of show you 
the sides are I think a little over a hundred foot because it took us about three and a half rolls hundred foot rolls to do this fencing so each side is over a hundred foot and the ends are right about 50 I don't remember exactly but around 50 feet across the ends so let me get back to work on tacking this up. Okay, so I'm realizing that the most difficult is the bottom. And where there's room to pull out the fence a little bit, sometimes it makes that easier to um, get that clamp around both the chicken wire and the fencing. Over here, however, it is so tight to the ground that I cannot pull out the fencing. So I ended up going up one rib here um, to fasten it. And then when I come back along and do the fabric staples, I'll fold this under and put the fabric staples in it up against the bottom of the fence. So that will keep it secure. But otherwise, coming along, I start at the top to keep the fence even on this rib and it's easier um, to keep the bows out of it. You're gonna end up with some bows if you have any uneven ground, which all of our ground is uneven, as you can kind of see here. And I have a big dip up there. So I'm hoping that this extra fencing will be enough to get that. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to cut a piece and add to it, and that's gonna be a pain. But I'm going to keep on trucking down this way. I, my goal is to get at least this end of the fence done today. Um, this is the area where the rabbits got in the most, so this is the most critical. And I'm thinking it's mostly down there where that big dip is, although I did find um, a dip over here that they could have got in as well. And that's the row that they kept inside the fence, that they kept wiping out my beans and my peas. <clears throat> Okay, so I have the top fasteners in the full end, and I had a little over, between a third and a half, where I had the other end done all the way to the ground. So I went ahead and just fastened around the top and pulling it, and I thought it would go a lot faster. Be, being down on my knees, doing the middle and the bottom definitely takes longer for sure. But I <clears throat> want to point out, remember to fasten real good at the corner. Here's the corner post on both sides. And I'm not going to do the bottom or all the way down the corners yet because I need to work the fence the full length um, to come on down and be taut the whole way. And then I'll need to rake up this side and stretch that fence to see how far it'll go. Um, it went all the way around our old garden, but again, it was pretty small compared to this one. So I'm hoping to get down about halfway at least this side with this old fencing. And then I have new fencing that's four foot high that I'll have to cut in half as I go or cut it all in half and then go back and tack it up. That's probably what I'll do, roll it out and just cut it. <clears throat> but so for now I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing the middle and the bottoms of this last little over halfway of this end. Okay, so here's a section of the fence where the bottom of the fence was up about three inches. So that definitely was an area where the rabbits were getting in. So yay, this should solve that problem here. Okay, I find it's easiest if you can make sure that the top of the chicken wire is right um, with the other wire and then put your J-channel end up around it and kind of push it in from the top and squeeze it. So that's the easiest way. Um, over here again where the fence is up enough, I don't have too much trouble, but where it's tight to the ground here, I have to go up one. So almost done with this row, and then I'll have to come back and put in 
the fabric staples while the I want to do it while the um, ground is damp we had a lot of rain over the weekend like five inches and our ground here is really rocky and like concrete when it dries so now it's the perfect time to get this job done so before I finish the other side I am gonna go get the the lawn staples and um, finish this end completely by putting those in and then we'll get down to the other side okay I have finished this end and fastened up the cor corner tightly put J clips several places all the way down on both sides of uh, this bar so like I said now I'm gonna go get staples because I do want to completely finish this one end and then I can get started on the long side <laughs> okay so this is the fabric staples that I will be using they are three and a half inches long. Let's see. So you can just kind of see them and get an idea here. Um, and they're mainly going to go in at the bottom where I didn't have um, any J clips or where the chicken wire was too long hanging out past the fence quite a bit that I have to fold it back up under and, and secure it. I could go and cut it all off, but that'll really take me long. <laughs> and this will help to really tighten it up where I couldn't get any J-clips along the bottom in some places because the fence was just too tight. <clears throat> so I'm going to work on that, and then I will show you how that looks. Not sure if you can see this too good. I'll try. Um, but that's what I'm doing. I'm just securing the very bottom where I couldn't get under it. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this end. Okay, so I got the staples all in that first end that I was doing. And then I got all of the leaves um raked away from the fence mostly at that half this half didn't have any so that awesome it saves me half the way to do it in case you're wondering why we put the weed block out a foot or more from the fence it's so we don't have to weed eat the fence in the summertime we have enough work to do around the homestead that was a chore we just didn't want to have to add so it really saves on that. My husband comes along with the mower and puts the wheel right on the edge or has the mower back deck just a little bit over the edge and cuts the grass. And most of the time that works really well unless he ends up with a big hump, then sometimes it hits the fabric and tears it up. But he's done that all last year here and there's no tears in it. So this area is good. So next I'm going to repeat and start stretching the wire, fastening at the top first along this long side and see how far I can get with that roll of fencing. Because then I'm gonna have to, I have another smaller piece that's two foot high. I don't know if I mentioned, but I do use the two foot high um, chicken wire for this. And this fence is six foot high, but it will not keep out deer. Deer can jump right over it. We don't have a lot of problems with deer, but late summer, for some reason, they love to eat my um, bell peppers. They eat the tops out of them, and then they knock some of the peppers, the fruits, on the, on the ground. So I'm going to get to it and see if I can at least get this fence rolled out and fastened along the top before the day's over. And I ran out here. 
So it went three and a half whole lengths and I have seven and a half more. So I did about a third of the side. I have another smaller piece, much smaller piece of this fencing rolled up in side the garden. And I'll get to that and see how far that can get me. It'd be nice if it'd get me at least to the end, but I don't think it's going to. Um, and then I'll have to break into the new stuff. So, in case you haven't seen my chickens, this is my hoop coop with my Plymouth Bard Rocks. Hopefully the sun's not too bright on you. Let me kind of get over here. Hello, ladies. What you doing? Huh? They love it when I come out and talk to them. They always come out to meet me. They're very friendly. Um, Plymouth Bard Rocks are a dual purpose chicken. And that's why the reason why I actually went with this breed. So they're really good layers. When they're laying, like most of the time they I get four eggs a day from the four hens. So once in a while I get three. <coughs> of course it slowed down in the winter. Um, but they also make good meat birds so I figured I could always breed them, raise more, and keep those others for a combination of more hen layers and any roosters. Well I need to keep one or two. Um, so I need to get a, a rooster from another farm in the spring because the rooster for this group died during the extreme heat last summer when we had almost 120 <coughs> with the heat index. So it was really miserable on them. So I will be looking for a Plymouth Bard Rock rooster in my area um, in the spring to rejoin these ladies. Um, and then my Easter eggers are in the other coop. I'll show you those at another time when I'm working over there. Okay, so I'm going to quit for the day, but this will not be the end of the video. Okay, we are back for day two of the fencing project. And I need to go back and finish Jay clipping um, the chicken wire to the fence. So let's get started on that. So some of these wires that are sticking out, I'm going to use to wrap around um, the edge of the other fencing. And then other ones, I'm going to cut off. We don't need every one to be like that. Oh, there's a honeybee on my camera. <laughs> okay, so I got the other small roll that we had left over from the old fencing. And looking at where the old garden was and that length, because this was from this side of the old garden, I don't think it's going to make it all the way to the end. But I'm going to unroll this, and we'll see how far it gets us. I don't know if you can see down there, but that section did do five and a half poles, so it gets me halfway down the chicken coop on the outside. So definitely worth reusing. Um, every bit counts. You know, this stuff is so expensive anymore that anytime we can reuse anything, we will. After this, I have a roll and a part of a roll of four foot. So I have to decide if I'm going to keep that for a different project later. And actually, it's going much, much quicker today, I think, because 
I kind of figured the easier ways of doing it yesterday. I'm not even messing with trying to get it on the very bottom of the fence. I'm just doing the top rectangle of the fence. And then because I have longer than the fence, I'm able to just roll it under and staple that down, which I did go back and staple down this last section I just did. <coughs> and nothing will get into the fence. So that's awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead, uh, one thing I need to remember is before I get started uh, J-clipping this one along the top, I need to J-clip down the side to make sure that when I'm pulling the top to get that one, that I'm not leaving a gap at the bottom. So I'm going to do what I just did. I'm not going to do it on camera since you already know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do the uh, down the edge and across the top and I'll be back okay I finished that section of the fence got all the J clips in ran out I only have six left um, got the staples along the bottom so that is completely functional I can always go back and add more J clips in the in the uh, middle but I did always push down on the fence at the bottom well, I was folding it over so that took a lot of the ripples out as well so this is where I'm gonna end today's video um, there will be a part two at the fence build but thanks for watching Jimmy Branch Homestead <laughs>